Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Execution of Marie Antoinette The story of Marie Antoinette and her downfall is one that is interpreted by some as a victory for the people of France, but others consider that the Queen's execution by guillotine was in fact an act of brutal, unnecessary punishment. She was a symbol of the French monarchy's unpopularity and was the Queen Consort, but her death was incredibly bloody, being beheaded in front of a huge crowd on October 16, 1793 in Paris. The crowd was huge, and thousands of guards lined the streets to make sure that everything went smoothly, and the French people hated her greatly. But who was she? How did she become such a loathed figure inside of France? Because her life was never supposed to end the way that it did. Marie was born on the 2nd of November 1755 in Austria, and in particular, Vienna. Born Marie Antonia, she was the youngest daughter of Habsburg's Empire's Empress Maria Theresa and her husband, the Holy Roman Emperor Francis I. She was born into vast riches, and it was destined for her to indulge, and she lived her formative years inside the royal Austrian palaces in complete luxury. She was educated with the best tutors in Austria, paid to tend upon her. However, the teachers noted how she had a lack of aptitude for learning, and was rather poor at writing in different languages, and also she could not grasp speaking different languages. This was incredibly important at the time for European princesses, as the hope was that they would marry a prince or king from another country to bring two nations together, forming alliances. Maria was skilled as a musician, and she preferred more practical things than academic, and her teachers noted that she had a good heart and good character. The hand of Maria was requested by Louis XV for a match for his oldest surviving grandson, Louis Auguste the Dauphin. This was accepted to bring together Austria and France, and the pair became engaged and then married by proxy. At the time, Marie was around 14 years old and she met her husband on the 14th of May 1770 at Versailles and the public were indifferent about the marriage. Marie was liked initially, but some did not agree to an alliance between Austria and France. After Louis XV's death, the Dauphin became King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette became the Queen of France. Initially, she had little sway over her husband, but was given a large amount of very expensive gifts from the king. One chateau she was given was covered in diamonds and gold, and the royal couple began to spend heavily on more luxuries and unnecessary items. The people of France found this grossly offensive, as at the time the country was suffering from crippling financial issues and the people were in great hardship being unable to buy food and bread for their families. Because of this, large amounts of the poor were dying, but the Queen kept spending large amounts of the country's money. She spent on her hairstyles, clothes, furniture and much more. In France, the people were rioting, and Marie began to be blamed by the people for the economic crisis. Everyone knew what she was doing, but she chose to ignore it. The royal couple did have children securing heirs to the throne, but the problems in France did not go away. There were celebrations when the children were born, in particular with the Dauphin's birth, but Marie was a key player at court. She began to promote her favourites, and it's believed that she had a number of affairs with high-ranking members of society. Leaflets about the Queen's infidelity even emerged across France, and the allegations of Marie's affairs were levelled against her, and some of these even included accusations that she had liaisons with other women. Because of this, people even questioned the legitimacy of the royal children, and Marie sought to improve her image, but she kept lurking from one disaster to another. The diamond necklace affair caused great scandal, in which part of France's most valuable jewellery was basically stolen. The tricks that emerged that were also levelled against Marie dragged her name further through the mud, accusing her of swindling the jewellery. Louis XVI, the king, also at times asked for Marie's advice on politics, 
as there was a problem brewing between him and the assembly, and this was a major factor in the French Revolution. But the driving force was money and the hatred for the monarchy. Louis also took part in a number of expensive wars, and coupled with the heavily spending royal family and an unwillingness by the higher ranking members of society to help the poor, France was heading from a slippery slope towards complete bankruptcy and depravity. This had devastating consequences for the king and the queen. During the French Revolution, there were a number of key events that led to the overthrowing of the monarchy. The storming of Bastille saw a direct attack and a symbol of the king's power, and how the people could rise up and overthrow the institutions instilled by the monarchy. The anger towards Marie and Louis drove the revolt, and the revolution forced the royal family out of their palace. European powers tried to find a way for the French royals to escape the revolution, and several plans were considered, but Marie refused them all as she wanted to stand by her husband and her children. The royal family were imprisoned eventually, and on the 21st of September 1792, the National Assembly declared France as a republic. An angry mob had broken into the royal palace and threatened to kill Marie and insulted her, and there was even blood spilled inside the palace. When the republic was declared, Louis was placed on trial and was sentenced to death on the 15th of January 1793, and was then executed by guillotine six days later in front of a huge crowd in Paris. The Queen was now living in prison and as a widow in mourning, and she hoped that her son would one day become king. She was held a prisoner of the French people, whilst held inside the tower of the temple, along with her children, she was insulted by guards and kept under a very close watch to make sure she could not speak with anyone from the outside. There was a big question following Louis's execution. What to do with Marie Antoinette? Many wanted her dead, as she was seen as a symbol of the monarchy and the old order like her husband. But others wanted her to be exchanged for prisoners of war, or even sending to foreign lands such as America. Her eight-year-old son, the Dauphin, was trained in the ways of the revolution, and Marie was transported from the temple to a small cell inside the conciergerie, being kept under very close watch and being given no privacy. She was brought to trial by the Revolutionary Tribunal on the 14th of October 1793, and it's thought to have been a sham trial, with the decision to execute the Queen being premeditated before she even stepped inside a courtroom. She was accused of many charges, including ones relating to finances, her alleged affairs and relationships, and even arranging massacres and deaths. She was found guilty of three significant charges, depleting the national treasury, conspiring against the security of the state, and of high treason, and she was sentenced to death. Marie believed she would spend her life behind bars, so the death sentence came as a shock. And her final days approached, she wrote to her sister-in-law telling of her love for her children, and of the Catholic faith before she made a will. To prepare for her execution, she was forced to change in front of her guards and was made to wear a plain white dress. However, she wished to wear black herself, her hair against her. Wishes was cut short to make sure that the guillotine sliced her head off with no issues. After being taken out of her cell, she was then bound with her hands being secured behind her back and it was noted that this hurt the Queen of France greatly. She was then placed on a rope lead and was taken to her carriage that took her to the place of execution. On an open cart, she was paraded through the streets of Paris before arriving at the Place de la Revolution. The crowds that day lined the streets as the slow moving cart exhibited the Queen throughout the city. And when she arrived at the execution site, they watched waiting with bated breath. The guillotine had been made ready for her, and at around 12.15pm on the 16th of October 1793, she stepped onto the scaffold to greet her executioner. Charles Henry Sanson was experienced and notorious as a headsman, and he had taken her husband's head 
ten months before, but now he was about to claim a royal double. He was stood in a black mask, and probably assumed that before, his most high-profile job would have been the King's. As Marie approached the executioner, she accidentally stood on his foot and said, Pardon me, sir, I did not mean to. Whilst she was on the scaffold, she maintained her composure whilst the crowd jeered at her and threw insults her way. A priest stayed with her and everything was made ready for the Queen's execution. She was then loaded onto the guillotine. She was placed on a board and then was slid under the blade. As was common with the guillotine, the method of execution was very swift and quick. Within seconds of the Queen of France's head being placed under the guillotine, her head had been taken off clean by the falling blade. The executioner then held it aloft to the crowd and proclaimed, Viva la République! And her remains were then taken to a graveyard behind the church of Madeleine. Interestingly, whilst the gravediggers were having a lunch break, Madame Tussaud took a wax imprint of her face before she was placed into an unmarked grave. In the following decades, her remains were exhumed and Marie Antoinette was given a proper burial. It was noted that on her skeleton there were even some of her famous white hair. However, inside of France, she was a very divisive figure. And whilst the French were struggling to buy bread, she was living her life of luxury. As with all major revolutions that have occurred throughout history, the starving public rising up was a prominent symbol of the dislike for the monarchy. She has been seen by some as a victim of brutality, and that her execution was unnecessary. However, her behaviour and disdain for the lower French people, gambling away money whilst everyone was suffering, is inexcusable. Without Marie, ultimately, it's likely that the French people would have not risen up, and it's possible that there could still have been a French royal family today. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.